Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the data. Hi, I'm Tim McConaughey, a cloud network architect, and welcome back to my series on AWS networking for network engineers. If you're just joining, you should probably start with the first episode, which should be showing up in the corner now. This time, we're going to start having a discussion about the AWS Transit Gateway. Now, Transit Gateway is the AWS answer to pretty much all things networking. You can think of it as an under-the-hood virtual machine that's running powerful router software and is kept resilient by AWS. You don't have to build a VM, upgrade it, or create one in each availability zone or anything like that. For us as network consumers, what the TGW, to use the AWS acronym, can do is connect multiple network services together. It can land all sorts of connections, and it connects workload VPCs together. You can connect a VPN tunnel to land directly on the TGW, or you can connect private circuits that AWS sells called Direct Connect so that the TGW can be the router that connects those circuits to other destinations that are also attached to the TGW. TGWs attach to VPCs using a construct called a TGW attachment. The TGW attachment can be thought of like a VXLAN VTEP or a network endpoint that can be deployed to one availability zone in the VPC. If you want resiliency for AZ failure, you deploy more than one attachment. TGW itself is a regional construct, and that means that in any given AWS region, the TGW exists only inside that region. But within that region, it can connect any services or VPCs that exist in any of those regional data centers. Think of TGW like the workhorse that AWS uses to connect almost all of its services together. It's the hub in a hub and spoke type of topology. TGW has a single main route table by default, just like a VPC router does. And by default, everything that connects to TGW will propagate the networks to that TGW route table. So in this example, the VPC CIDR for the web VPC would be placed into the main TGW route table when the VPC is attached. AWS handles the AZ affinity for traffic to and from that VPC, making sure that the correct attachment is used based on where the workloads are. Now in the case of VPN or direct connect, there are a few options. The VPN connection can be statically configured to advertise certain networks to AWS, or the other end of the VPN might be a network device that can use BGP to advertise networks directly to AWS. The TGW supports BGP for dynamic routing. Interestingly, the BGP itself is configured at the VPN level, but the TGW will pull in the routes that are advertised to its route table once the VPN is connected. For Direct Connect, it's a bit more complicated, and I'd like to save a lot of that nuance here for another video. Suffice it to say that a DX, to use the AWS term, involves using an intermediate construct called a Direct Connect Gateway. The DX Gateway sits between the AWS Direct Connect and the TGW, and it serves kind of like a, a fan-out point from which multiple connections can be made from that Direct Connect. I'm intentionally being a bit vague here because I want to keep the focus on TGW for now. We'll have another video down the road talking about hybrid connectivity and DX, and I don't want to chase this rabbit today. We're almost out of time here, and I want to talk about routing with TGW, so let's move on for now. TGW attachments can have their own routing tables, and the route tables work just like VRFs with one small exception. When we use custom route tables, we pick whether or not we want to import or propagate the routes from other TGW route tables or route sources. So the web VPC in this example could choose to import routes from the DX route table, but not the VPN route table, if that made sense for the requirements. One last thing that floors every network engineer the first time they hear it, TGW route tables are only consulted on ingress which means that when traffic comes into an attachment, that's when the route table is consulted. That's mind-blowing to network engineers that are used to the idea of a route table being the same regardless of where, where the traffic actually originates. But this does allow some very interesting traffic manipulation patterns. We'll save that for a more advanced video. This serves as a good introduction to what TGW is and the basics of how you use it for networking. Next time, we'll get into some of the more advanced options with TGW and see where you can go from there. Thanks for watching, and I hope this has been helpful.